Welcome to the Podium Pod, the Pick and Rolls National Basketball Podcast as we begin the road to Paris 2024. I'm Adam Webster and I'm joined today by Pick and Roll feature writer Will Crouch. Will, welcome to the show. Mate, thanks for having me. It's exciting. It's been an exciting week in Australian basketball and certainly an eventful one today, especially. And a really impressive one for the Opals. We just saw them with their second statement victory in the row against the number two ranked side in the world, China. Uh, I was talking to Daniel Herborn about this a couple of nights ago on the show, but there's a real different feel to the victories between the Boomers and the victories with the Opals because you're playing sides with such a disparity in world ranking that you kind of have to take the the Opals victories a little bit more seriously and with a little bit more of a close eye than the Boomers victories against number 29 in the world, the men's Chinese team. Uh, the Opals were unstoppable tonight. I mean, a victory 91-63, I believe 28 points. So that's the second 28-point victory of the week. Uh, it was a fantastic performance. They just stifled China at every turn. It really looked clinical. And they did it across kind of all aspects. The defense was really good. The offense looked smooth, flowing. The guard play was really strong. The big shot well, rebounded well. The Opals got to the line. I think they were about 40 free throws tonight and and converting from the line really effectively. It just looked clinical all around. It looked like the Opals weren't playing the number two country in the world. Um, It looked more like China were a minnow. And look, Hanju didn't look like she was at her best necessarily. Maybe China are looking at this as more of a friendly. Um, They know what they're doing and they're focusing on some things. They're not quite taking it seriously, but you know, they're things we don't necessarily know. You can only take it on the result and what you see. And it certainly passes the pub test the way the Opals have been playing and especially without seven WNBA players. Well, that's um, that's my point. It, it's it's unfair to say that this is the Opal's second choice team. It's sort of one and a half, isn't it? Because half of the squad is probably missing compared to what to, will go to Paris. And we'll get into the players that were missing in a little bit. But, I mean, the players that stepped up, um, you had even Zatina Okusko, I want to call her out, 11.6 rebounds. She had a really strong second half. Mariana Tolo, obviously a veteran. She had 10 points. Amy Atwell was was pretty good the whole game. And players that, you know, were strong the last game, Alice Kunek is an example of that, as well as Izzy Borlace, were a little bit quieter this time around. So you saw different players kind of um, take their opportunity and score and get involved in the offense. And it's just, uh, we talk about how hard the job of Brian Gorgian was this week but I don't think we can make quite enough about how difficult the job for Sandy Brondello is to pick 12 players out of this group. I mean, everyone was really impressive. Yeah. And I think the funny thing about this one is for Sandy is there's probably about six different teams she could take. She could go jumbo really big. She could go small, lots of guards and forwards. She could look for shooting. She could look for creators and there's almost no wrong answer because that such is the depth of talent. For mine, yeah. I think Izzy Borlace, I'm just such a massive fan of the way she goes about it and her game. It's so polished for a 19-year-old. I think she punched her ticket on Wednesday already. I think yes. um, that was pretty much marked in cement. But tonight it was incredible. I mean, Amy Atwell, I think there are a lot of people, punters, who maybe thought she was not necessarily in the mix. But tonight she got out, went out and showed that she could score it with the best she can, you know, she fits in seamlessly in that offense. She can hold her own on D and it wouldn't be crazy to put her on a final 12 roster. Um, Alice Koenig, both nights, really impressive. Steph Reed, Matty Rochi, both handling the ball really well. And, and that has been an area of concern over some years, that backup point guard spot on the Opals. We've got so many strong guards and strong forwards, but that real point guard spot has sometimes been one that perhaps they've been hesitant to put another point guard there they've taken shooting or or size but I think so many people have been putting their hand up Um, certainly don't envy Sandy I mean I'm sure you've got a team and I've got a team written down here who we might take but Sandy's is there's so much more minutiae for her as well she knows these girls on a level that just no one else in the world probably does but certainly wouldn't envy her uh, shoes right now Steph Reed was probably one of the more impressive players in this game for me, just from the ability to penetrate, the ability to control the offense. I mean, obviously that's what she does, but it strikes me that you need a couple of players like that. And obviously you have Jade Melbourne as opportunity to be that, that point guard off the bench, but 
Um, you do need a couple of floor generals. And and Steph Reed strikes me, it strikes me tonight how easy it was for her to get wherever she wanted and get the ball wherever she wanted it to go on the court. And I think she's one of those ones. She's probably the best pick and roll player in the WNBL. And she's yep. probably going to show that she's one of the best in Europe when she heads over there next season. But we saw that tonight. We saw what she can do in a pick and roll. When the shot clock's winding down and people are starting to get nervy, She's the person you want with the ball in her hand. She's such a smart decision maker. She can find space for her own shot, but she's also such a good passer. And we saw that a couple of times tonight, just how level-headed and smart she is when the clock is winding down. So certainly wouldn't be out of place to see her in the final 12. She's certainly able to hold her own against the world number two, both games this week. But yeah, just that intelligence and that high basketball IQ, in the, especially in the pick and roll, I think. Um, but a steady head as well. You, you don't get nervous watching her bring the ball up the court. Some players, certainly no one in this team, but some players you get that feeling, you know, the loose handle or what are they going to do next? Or is their decision-making sound? And I just don't think you get that with, uh, with Reed whatsoever. Well, the Podium Pod is brought to you by Team Feet. Team Feet offers premium athletic socks for modern teams. However, they compete with sweat wicking cotton, arch support, ventilation panels, and compression stitching. Team Feet socks are built to outperform whether your team is tiny or thousand strong. Team Feet unites and excites your players and supporters with their combination of quality and performance. Join basketball teams around Australia and the world by choosing Team Feet. For designs and worldwide delivery, head to teamfeet.com. We thank Team Feet for supporting this show. Will, I want to talk about the players that haven't played this week. There have been seven WNBA-level players, talents that uh, that are missing from the wider squad. You've got Steph Talbert, Ezzy Magbagor, Alana Smith, Christy Wallace, Beck Allen, Jade Melbourne, Sammy Whitcomb. We just saw Shyla Hill drop 50 in the NBL1 competition as well. She's in that extended large squad. Um, so for the Opals, uh, it's... It's an embarrassment of riches. It's far greater than the men's competition or the men's program in terms of the depth of talent and the quality of talent at the very top levels. It's quite a remarkable time in Australian women's basketball. I certainly think so. And I think that's why there is such a desire and want to win an Olympic medal. I mean, you talk to any Olympian, it's what they want to do. But I think the Opals have an acute understanding of the opportunity they have and and how much talent is there. And also, you know, for the teams that are, for the players rather that are going away with this team, they know there are so many girls who would give up anything to be on that team as well. So I think you're, you're absolutely right. There is such an embarrassment of riches and we're seeing, you know, Alana Smith is playing exceptional basketball, really having a, had a breakout year last year and, and kind of continuing that breakout campaign. They're really punching her ticket, isn't she? Absolutely. We're just getting a taste of really what Jade Melbourne can do. Still yeah. so young in the league. Um, Steph Talbot, I think, gets slept on more than anyone. You know, it was not that long ago. She was an all-star five player at a third place finish in the World Cup. A world-class defender, world-class scorer, a leader on this team, looking to go to her third games. Um, Ezzy Magbagor, an all-star WNBA player last year who really, you know, has the tick of approval as kind of the person who the LJ is passing the torch on to from a number of vocals. Yeah. So I think it's just really exciting as well. I think perhaps the, this last week, people have really got a taste of players like Izzy Borlase and, and a reminder of LJ, what she's able to do. But I think, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a whole different story when we see this full team come together because it, it's just going to be stacked. So just looking at the team that played this week, Will, who are your walk-up starters? Who has to go on the plane to Paris? I think we can agree on Lauren Jackson, right? Uh, we've, we've got to start. Undoubtedly. With you have to take her on the plane to Paris, but uh, that's a given. Who else is on that plane? Definitely. Tess Madgen, another one that we have to probably mark down as assured, right? Well, Tess is a really interesting one, I think. I think her leadership is what she's measured on and what she brings yeah, to the group right. as the leader. Um, you know, basketball ability, she's obviously right up there, but I think there'd be some people who might say, well, I'd rather have this player. I'd rather have a Steph Reed, who's a, yep. a steadier hand, perhaps at the point guard. But I think at this stage, it'd be quite a big call from Sandy to not select the incumbent captain. So I think, yep. and, and, you know, it can't be understated what she's done for the program. And then you, you can't gloss over where the program was and, and what it's kind of, gone through and the growth it's had and she spearheaded that so I think she's certainly 
a deserving um, member of that final team should Sandy go with the decision that we expect. Like you said, LJ, I think she's a certain starter. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I think for me, Izzy Borlase is a lock. I think you only have to look at her offensively and she's doing things no one else on that court is necessarily doing. As a 19-year-old, it's just incredible to watch. Um, Her shooting gets her in the team. Her offensive play, whether it's decision-making, whether it's attacking the rim, regardless of what it's doing, her defense is certainly up to the standard. And I just think it'd be crazy not to take someone who's doing all those things and kind of should be there on merit, but is also only 19. And we just don't know. The sky is really the limit for what she can do. So I think for mine, she's a starter. I think uh, it'll be an interesting, one of the interesting line ball ones is, do you go with Garvin or Kayla George? Kayla George, obviously been a great contributor for a number of years. Garvin as well. Is there any room for one of them? Because I think Mariana Tolo goes away. And I think Alana Smith, Ezzy Magbigor are already there. LJ, as you mentioned, is there only room for one more big? It's going to be a really tough rotation. Really strong. Absolutely. And I think then there's probably one more spot and it's down to, I think, do you go with a guard? Do you take a Steph Reed, or do you go with a forward wing who could play a bit of small ball four and has played the four for a number of years in her career in an Alice Koenig for mine. Yeah. Um, she was exceptional in game one alongside Izzy Bolas. Those two just ripped the game apart, had a remarkable story, exiled from the Opals. Um, she's made this incredible comeback. I think it just would be an incredible story as well. And I think sometimes yeah. that's what the Olympics are about, aren't they? They're a romantic um, it's what sport's all about. And you, you love seeing these romantic stories. Um, and I just think uh, Koenig, it, it might just be the right call. Sometimes you pick with your heart over your head. And I don't know if Sandy's the type of person who would do that. I'm not suggesting that's necessarily how she makes all her decisions, but it would feel right. I think if someone like an Alice Koenig made this team. Yeah. We've seen great success from some of the greatest basketball programs in the world, taking both, the veteran that doesn't necessarily offer quite as much on court anymore. And as well as the teenager or player in their early twenties, that is going to represent you at four or five Olympics. I think back to the 08 Olympics when Ricky Rubio went for Spain at just 18 years old, 17 years old, and he was able to make a mark. And that was the first of his four or five Olympics. Izzy Borlase is going to be in that same boat. Jade Melbourne's going to be in that same boat. They both project as, health permitting players that are going to play for Olympics and you kind of have to embed them in the culture that the Opals have built, which has been extremely successful over the last few years. You've written about it yourself uh, in your piece on Test Magin on pickandroll.com.au. And speaking of Test Magin, I want to make another cross comparison to a different nation. Argentina took Luis Scola to probably one tournament too many as well, but Luis kind of elevated that entire team in terms of, they had the belief, they had someone who had been there, done that, been in big moments and set the tone for the culture of this team. So when you look at those sorts of players, I think you do need players at either end of the age spectrum to give you the youthful exuberance and the excitement and to also give you the steady hand and the the experience and knowing how to deal with all of that stuff. I think that's the beauty of this Opals team. And I mean, we're talking about, you know, I'm talking about uh, Tess Magin as the veteran. You've got Lauren Jackson there at uh, in her early 40s that is the super veteran, but uh, it's just a lock, right? It's quite remarkable that we're talking about someone in their 40s as you don't even question whether they're going or not. They're just going. And it's funny, LJ, when she went away to the World Cup and we had that initial shock of, oh my goodness, LJ's made this comeback. She can, she yep. can actually still play. She's moving well. She looked fit then, but now I think she looks even fitter than before, which is just crazy to think, you know, she's getting older, but um, it's just the epitome of aging gracefully, isn't it? She looks great out there. She's moving well. She's shooting the ball well. She's obviously doing it at the NBL one level where she's dropping 50 pieces. Um, so I think, I think for mine, she's a lock. Um, as what you mentioned about Tess Magin, it's funny. And the, the Louis Scola comparison, I think, when you look at these teams, I think John Casey mentioned it in the in the commentary too. It's not necessarily about the 12 best players, is it? It's about the 12 that fit the best. And are you going to get something that is the gra- greater than the sum of its parts? And I think with Tess, that's a, 
a, a given. She's going to make any any group of 11 other players that she's a part of as the 12th a better group. And I think that's where her value really lies. Obviously, brings value as a player, but I think not everyone can necessarily fit in a team as a, whether they're a sixth man, a, a starter, a 12th player, whatever it is. Some people can't always adapt to those roles. And I think one of the strengths of the Opals and Tess in particular is they're very malleable. They, they're happy because they know that it's not about them. It's about being greater than the sum of their parts. So I think that's really where some some value lies for someone like a Tess Magin who's been a leader for a long time in this team. And the future is so extremely bright. bright. We've spoken about Jade. We've spoken about Easy. You also have another piece on pickandroll.com.au about a young lady by the name of Saffron Shields who recently took away the under-18 Asia Cup final with a performance of 31 points, 15 rebounds and six assists, uh, going up against a Chinese team that were playing someone who's seven foot five, um, which is unheard of uh, in under-18 basketball, let alone under-18 women's basketball. Not a hype that you see a lot in that game. Uh, an unbelievable talent. And you look forward to Los Angeles 2028 and Saffron Shields potentially entering her WNBA career, entering her professional career at that point in time. And it just, the future looks even brighter for the Opals in four years. And I look forward to Paris because it's, it's their best chance, I think, to win a gold medal in quite some time, particularly with the turmoil of Tokyo. Certainly right. And, I, and Tess Magin said to me when I spoke to her last that it doesn't feel like it's a last dance. Um, which I think, you know, with the boomers in some ways, it feels like it does. There's the end of an era with a lot of guys and then a distinctly different era of younger guys. But with the Opals, there's this beautiful continuity and, and, and flow into the next year. And it feels like they're invested in not just these games, but also the next games. And, you know, (laughs) Saffron Shields, it blew me away watching her. She finished, I think 13 of 15 or 11 of 13. She missed two shots for the game. And they yeah. only came at end of the shot clock heaves. You know, she was just so clinical with the way she dissected China's defense in that game. And you just think it's like watching a young Kevin Durant out there. She's long, tall, but has such grace and such um, incredible control over her handle and her jump shot. Um, and in saying that as well, I've got a piece with Georgia Amor coming up and she's an incredible yes. young talent as well, who's probably been a bit out of sight, out of mind, given she's, wrapping up a collegiate career that's been just so decorated and incredible, but she's one that we can expect to see much more of in the coming years. And there's there's just so much talent. I mean, we could sit here for 15 minutes, probably just listing off names, Izzy Bourne and and so many others. But um, I think that's, that, that is a really exciting thing. These Olympics, there's, there's a distinct expectation to medal, but it's not just, you know, if we, if we don't get it here, there's a, there's a lot of countries who have a golden generation and if they don't succeed, yep. it feels like they've, they've blown it. But for the Opals, I think that sustained expectation of excellence and success is um, such a beautiful thing. And I think there's so much to be excited about in that space. Well, the Opals will make their final roster cuts this evening and then they'll travel to Spain in a couple of weeks' time. They've got games against Spain on the 22nd of July Canada on the 23rd of July, their final preparations ahead of the 2024 Paris Olympics. The Podium Pod will be there every step of the way. We'll be bringing you episodes after every single Opals warm-up game, group stage game, and hopefully all the way to the final. Will Crouch, thank you so much for joining me for the first time on the Podium Pod. Always great to be here, mate. Thanks for having me. And stay tuned and obviously head to pickandroll.com.au for Some fantastic basketball writers like Will and like the whole team you'll have here on the Podium Pod. We will see you again next time.